In, in this uh, video in the uh, Fundamental of Electrical Circuits series, we're going to talk about superposition principle. Superposition principle comes from the concept that since our circuits are linear, basically all the equations we have of first order, we are able to find responses to individual sources of uh, power like uh, current source and uh, voltage source and then add them all up to find the total total value of a current or a voltage in a given space. And this concept is referred to as the superposition principle. So what we're going to do, we're going to start uh, <clears throat> applying that. But before we go forward, there's a few things we have to agree on. In order to, um, to do this process, we also have to deactivate all independent sources. We do not touch the dependent sources. Dependent sources do not change. We only deactivate all independent sources except for one, okay? So we're gonna go through individually, deactivate all independent sources except one, then we're gonna deactivate the second independent, I deactivate everything except the second uh, independent source and third and fourth and all that until we've gone through all the independent sources. Again, really want to emphasize that we do not do anything with dependent sources. We're going to focus on independent sources. So as we have just one independent source activated at a time, we're going to do an analysis of the circuit, find out the value of the response, which means either a current or a voltage at some point in the circuit based on that one independent source then we're going to repeat this process for all the other sources and we're going to sum all the responses to find the total response that is there this is a lot of words so let's go ahead and get take a look at an example and see uh, how we can handle it but before we go there i just want to remind what remind uh, the viewer the listener that a short for voltage source when we say we are deactivating a voltage source we're saying that we want the V to go to zero, which means we want to short it. And when we say we want to deactivate a current source, we are saying that I has to go to zero, and therefore that we have to open it to guarantee that's the case. So let's go over here and take a look at this circuit, for example. This is an example. They are asking us to find the total response. In this particular case, is the voltage across the 20 ohm. And... Uh, so they're asking us to find that. Well, of course, we could use all the tools we've learned. We can use KCL if you like. We could use KVL. We could use um, other methods to find this. But in this particular, they're asked, the particular case, they're asking us to use the superposition. So that's what we're going to do. We have a total of one, two, and three. Um, so, so here is one two and three independent sources so we have to deactivate all these independent sources and activate one so what we're going to do we're going to first let's say start with activating the five volts only all right so so what i'm going to do every time we do this i'm going to redraw the circuit just to make sure uh, we don't end up with some error okay because we are trying to overdraw it on the same um oops sorry um so let's go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and get rid of this text create a clean space and i'm going to get grab this and make a copy of this so we have it so i don't have to redraw it Okay, so uh, first we're gonna activate five volt source. And uh, that means that we will have to deactivate everything else. So what do we do when we deactivate a voltage? I'm sorry, this has to stay activated. So this is the one we are actually looking for right at this minute as we're trying to look at this one. So we're gonna deactivate this source, which basically means I has to go zero. In order for I had to go to zero, we have to take it out and create a open. So there's gonna be an open here. And this one is deactivated two, which means this is gonna be an open. Now, as we discussed, the dependent source in this case will not be touched. 
But if you look over here uh, in the IX, which wasn't drawn in here, the IX is assumed to be right there. So since 2IX is this source went away, IX or the current in here is equal to zero, which means this is going to be zero volts, two times zero. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so we need to find out uh, what is the voltage of, so we need to find this with respect to uh, voltage across the 20 ohm with respect to 5 volts. Of course, this is a simple KVL. We can write a KVL, find the I, and uh, then I times 20 gives us the answer, or we can, we know this is a voltage divider, so we know for this particular case, V of 20 ohm, uh, in response to the 5 volt is going to be equal to 5 volt divided by 10 plus 20 that's the current through here times um, times 10 I'm sorry times 20 so it's going to be 100 over 30 which is about 3.3 .3 volts so now we have the response with respect to the five volts. Okay, so that's done. Next thing we want to do is we want to calculate. So this is all taken care of. Now we got to go take care of this. So the next one is we're going to deactivate everything except for the one amp only. Okay, so let's see if that's still, the circuit's still in my, yep, it is. So, so um, here is the circuit, and in this case, we're only going to keep this one active, which means everything else is going to go away. In the case of the source, in this case, that voltage source, when it goes away, we replace it with a short. This current source goes away. And we leave it with an open and as you recall this is what we call IX which is again is equal to zero because that is open therefore this is equal to zero so we if you let's redraw the circuits oh actually I don't know if you need to but um, maybe should uh, these two uh, 10 and 20 are in parallel which is equal to 6.7 ohm so let's redraw this one so we got a 6.7 ohms here and the voltage we want to measure is this voltage and then we got zero which is basically nothing there and then we have a resistor here of 40 ohms and we've got a current source which is one amp therefore the one amp is going to flow through here therefore the v of 20 ohm because of the in response to the one amp is going to be 6.7 times 1 amp which is going to be 6.7 volts so now we have the response to that one so the only thing we've got left to do is we got to find out the response to with respect to the 2 amp so let's do that again so we're going to activate 2 amp supply only and since I have this copied, I'll just put it back out here. Okay, so now in this particular case, one amp is deactivated, so that goes away. So that's an open. This is deactivated. So that's a short. And then uh, this IX, since it's the same branch as the 2 amp, is equal to 2 amp, which in turn means this is going to be 4 volts. Okay. Um, so let's redraw this again. We're going to have, again, the 20 and the 10 are in parallel with each other, which means this is going to be 6.7 ohms. The independent source is valid. It's in there for 4 volts then uh, we have a 2 amp and then uh, we're gonna have a resistor here of, um, and of 
course, don't forget this is plus and minus V20. Okay, so V20, and this is 100 ohm. And so the current is going this way, so it's coming, notice the current is coming this way, so it's gonna generate a voltage that goes from here to here. So V20 for this instant is actually gonna be minus, because it's in the opposite direction, two times 6.7 which gives us a minus uh, 13.4 volts. All right, now we gotta find the total response since we have gone through all the independent sources. So the total response is gonna be equal to, and this is a 20 ohm because of the two amp. So what we're gonna do is we have to take all of these res uh, the, the responses because of the five volt, because of the one amp and all that and add them up so if i go through and look because of the three volts we have 3.3 volts so that's 3.3 volts because of the five volt supply then we had 6.7 volts because of the one amp supply and um, and finally we had uh, minus 13.4 right here uh, because of the two amp supply. So, so the total response, which is V20 total, is gonna be equal to this is 10 minus 13, so it's gonna be minus 3.4 volts, that's the answer. So if you've done everything correctly, you could have got the same answer. If you've done a KVL or KCL, you should be able to get the same exact answer. So that's superposition. So superposition fundamentally is go ahead and activate only one independent source at a time, find the response, and then add them up. In some situation, that's a lot easier. For example, if you've got a really, really large circuit, and you just want to know what is the response to do one of the supplies that is in the system, you do not have to calculate all of them. Just deactivate everything else, leave your source activated, and find out what the response is because of that particular source.